What's up, AO family? How y'all doing? Back at you again this month, Brian Clayton, here to answer some questions, help everybody out, and hopefully uh, help you guys some avoid some mistakes I've made. Uh, let's get into it. First question. Mark Gibson asks, what process would be best to define leap of faith assumptions when trying to bring a product to market that has never been developed before? Currently, I'm developing a non-technical data analytics tool, also known as business intelligence for small businesses, to be able to have access to data analytics. We are currently in the period of uncertainty of who our initial target audience will be. Currently working on developing a minimal viable product encompasses KPIs that most businesses would find useful. We are looking to gather attention off of our basic KPI framework for most businesses. Okay, so uh, you have a great question. You're asking the right question um, because the problem is most technical startups spend uh, eight, nine, ten months building something and then they launch it and find out nobody wants it. So the shorter the distance between you and getting a product in customers' hands, the better. So whatever that, that gap is right now, you have to close that gap. And um, you, you've got to create some sort of, uh, like you said, minimal viable product, a prototype, if you will, to start getting feedback from people to understand if you're on the right track or not. And so there's two gr really good books about this. One is The Lean Startup by Eric Ries. I'm sure you're familiar uh, with it. Uh, and another one is called The Startup Owner's Manual by Steve Blank, who was Eric Ries' mentor. And both these books... Uh, basically in, in 2,000 pages uh, tell you to, you got to get out of the building, you got to talk to customers, and you got to get their feedback to figure out if you're on the right track or not. So when you say leap of faith, um, it's kind of contrary to what, uh, what the Lean Startup teaches. The Lean Startup teaches uh, launch uh, something very small, get some validation, keep iterating, making it better and better and better, or figure out if you're on the right path. When you say leap of faith, to me that, that indicates more of, hey, we're going to spend eight or nine months building something and hope that there's a market for it, hope that people need it, hope that we're solving a problem. And that's not really the way to go about it. Um, for example, like there used to be these, uh, these hackathons that were like really, really popular back about 10 years ago um, that, that where you would like – get two or three people together and you would you would like oh, in a weekend would like, come up with an idea hack a product together and then try to get 10 customers for it and you'll learn more doing something like that than than like spending eight or nine months strategizing and building something without trying to get 10 customers is my point so while those things were kind of silly in nature because like who can launch a business in 48 hours or 72 hours they were helpful because they teach you to build something that somebody needs and and build something that somebody wants um, because you got to get like 10 or 20 customers by the end of the weekend. So my advice would be to have an ideal customer segment in mind uh, and be really specific with what that is. So you say you say KPIs for, for small businesses. That's pretty broad. And uh, to be honest, that's a really going to be a really competitive market because there's already a lot of that stuff. But you might say, hey, one thing we noticed is that, I don't know, Dentists, for example, don't really have any really good insight into how happy their customers are and why their customers aren't coming back. So we're going to solve that problem for dentists, and we're going to get 10 dentists to, to use our product, and we're going to build it alongside with them, telling us what they want, telling us what problems they have, and really build a solution for that problem. So that's how I would approach it. I would start with the problem first. And, and KPIs and business and BI for a small business is not broad, is not specific enough. To be honest, it's a really competitive space. You need to be like, this is our customer, this is their problem, and this is what we solve for them. And then you build s to suit that, and you build it along with them using it as you're building it, rather than this leap of faith uh, uh, risk that you're taking on with, uh, with, with just trying to hope, hopefully build it and they will come. I promise you, if you build it, they will not come. You need to find the problem first, build the, to, to solve the specific problem. And BI for small businesses is not specific enough. Hope that helps.
Uh, let's see, next question. By Gabriella Binkley. Should I validate my service and business process before offering services to the public? I am a prospect finder. I help independent pr uh, professionals build their business network by reaching out to their ideal prospects. I've been working with my first client and I enjoy the learning experience. She is also enjoying this opportunity to do something she's never done before and for her business. The service contract covers three month period. I would have preferred to teach her to prospect finding contract process. This would have enabled me to dedicate time to reach new prospects. I feel like this experience is, is uh, giving me a better way to market my service before sharing it with a large group of connections like my social media contacts. I like your approach, to be honest. Um, I think, I think much of business and much of starting new businesses is an experimental process. It's like, should I validate my service for and business before offering my service to the public? It's like fire bullets, then cannonballs. Um, another, another metaphor would be test, then invest. So r the more you can get in there and just put in the reps of, of what the service looks like, how is it repeatable, how is it? How is it? Uh, how can I build processes around what it is I'm doing? How can I make it uh, standardized in terms of how I onboard new customers and how I serve them and how I deliver a, a good experience for them? And the only way you're going to learn those things is by actually doing it with one customer. So, I would I would serve this one customer, and I would pretend like it's ten or a hundred, and I would ask myself like, how can I build processes and routines? to to make this run smoother in a more predictable fashion and how can I eventually train people up to do the things that I'm doing so I would spend uh, there's three things you're doing at once you're working in the business which is you're doing the prospecting then you're working on the business which is you're developing the processes how do I prospect how do I get the information from the client how do I deliver them the results how do I make sure that they're happy how do I uh, follow up to make sure that they want to continue to renew the contract like all of these processes and then you're working on yourself like how can I up my sales game how can I up my understanding of of uh, of, of new tools that I can use to find better prospect prospects for my customers how can I uh, quite frankly learn copywriting because if you're you're a business prospector pacific, uh, particularly online a lot of what you do boils down to really good copy so maybe I'm working on myself becoming a really good copywriter and so seven days a week Monday through Friday working in the business just running it Saturday working on the business uh, you know, developing the processes, processes, routines, how you're going to get more customers, how you're going to uh, standardize this thing. And then Sunday, working on yourself. Maybe not all day Sunday, but maybe three or four hours, uh, reading books, watching podcasts, taking online courses, figuring out what's one thing that you want to improve. Uh, copywriting would be a good tactical skill that you could learn. Um, and do and just re rinse and repeat that. Um, and that's how you go from, I've got an idea and a very small business to scaling out a bigger business. And then as time goes on, uh, and you get contractors, freelancers, employees to help you with the in the business part, uh, then you can scale that back, maybe three days in the business, three days on the business, two days on yourself. And so the idea is to, is to, is to move from in the business to on the business and more on yourself. Hope that helps. But I like your approach uh, with, with testing it out with one person first for a long time before you just go go wide with it and offer it to the general public, so to speak. Next question is from Cheston Salisbury. How do I create a bigger sense of urgency around making money? I've been an entrepreneur for 10 years. I've always made just enough, but I've never really had a strong desire to make more than just enough. Yes, I want to make more, have more, but there just seems to be obviously some mental hurdles that I have not been able to overcome. What mindset mindset shifts do you recommend to go from not money motivated to I can do have and be more with more income what are different ways that we can look at the issue to be motivating exciting me is just supposed to make more money are there different objectives that you've experienced or are just rewarding as having a big bank account that motivates and inspires you great question love this question because so much uh, that comes down to business ownership and and running and owning and scaling your own business comes down to um, 
personal psychology. You have to manage your own personal psychology to be successful in business because a lot of it is like a mind game almost. And it's particularly the first three or four years, it is, it's very much like pushing a rock up a mountain or pushing on a string. Like there's so much that goes in and very little that comes out. So a lot of it is managing your own personal psychology. I think you have to have almost a chip on your shoulder. Like you have to have some burning desire that you want to see something exist or you just want to be the best in your marketplace at whatever business you're working, you're working on. Like for me, my first business was a landscaping company. And I grew it from just me and a push mower to me and 150 employees and 90 trucks going out every day. Ultimately, $10 million a year in revenue. It took me 15 years to do that. And then I sold the company uh, to, a, to a big national company. But a lot of it was about making money. But like half of it was I just wanted to prove to myself that I could build the biggest business in my marketplace, in my industry. I wanted, like I had pride in that. Like it was an extension of, of who I am. And my businesses have always been that. And so I think, I think there has to be some kind of chip on your shoulder that, makes, that, that, that drives you to want to like be more, do more, learn more, and that the business is kind of the vehicle for that. One thing that I do even today uh, is, is a little psychological game I'll play with myself is I, fast, I, I do what's called I fast forward the story forward. So what I mean by that is like I'll close my eyes and I will think about one year from today. And one year from today, uh, I let, let the idea that maybe I'm doing the same BS that I am today. I'm making the same money. I have the same amount of employees or no employees. And I'm in the same rat race that I'm in, I'm in today. And that scares me to take action today. Um, and so, so that's, a, that's a psychological kind of mind game I al I've always played with myself, to, uh, uh, especially in my second business. Um, to try to keep me uh, motivated to, to, to taking action. Another thing I will recommend is do small things. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, businesses is like a dichotomy of, of you have a big vision and a big goal, like you have a big dreams, but you also have to do very, very small things over and over again. Maybe it's like reach out to five customers and make sure they're happy. And, to, and, and create a, pr a routine where every Monday you reach out to five customers. Maybe it's uh, write a good blog post on your company website every Tuesday. And like you do that every Tuesday without fail. Maybe Wednesday you're, you're, uh, you're, you're doing market research and you're like testing out other competitors' products. And you're like doing, uh, you're, you're figuring out like what they're doing better than you and letting that uh, uh, guide your decision making. You know. What my point is, is like you're doing small things and creating routines and processes where those small things compound. And as time goes on, uh, the small things become big things. So my point is, is, is how, do you, like, how do you manage your personal psychology and how do you like get that drive? One, there has to be a fire in your belly to build a big business, a successful business. You have to have a chip on your shoulder. And, and, and so you need to have that first. Second thing is you need to do small things because the small things become big things. And a lot of times we get overwhelmed by the big stuff and we don't do anything. And that's horrible in a business. So, so focus on the small things. Focus on, focus on the process uh, because that's what builds the, the momentum. And then the third thing is, is like let, let the idea of, of uh, a year from now uh, and no progress scare you uh, into taking action today. There's a quote that I like from Jim Rome and he says, in five years, you will have arrived. The only question is where. And the business could be the answer to that question. Hope that helps. Last question is from Vanessa Dijon Voska. Sorry if I mispronounced your last name. Uh, what are some ideas that I could use to create subscription revenue business? Thank you in advance. I have a new consulting business focusing on HR strategies process improvement, HR software implementation, organizational change management, and I also provide coaching services for business professionals, HR executives, and NLP. I would like to get some advice on how I can establish a subscription revenue business for HR customers for companies to help them scale. Thank you for your time and help. It's a really good question, and uh, I think you're solving a problem that needs to be solved. I think there's an actual need for uh for like fractional hr uh in 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 small businesses because if you know 
even if you're a small business, you're doing a million dollars a year, you have to be compliant with HR rules that billion dollar companies do. And they have HR departments. And as a small business, you don't. So I think you're solving a real problem. And to your point, like how do you create a subscription software, a subscription service? Um, like, like many other things in business, you're just going to have to test the hell out of this. Let's say you've got 10 customers right now and they're paying you like a la carte to come in and do implementation, uh, do, do like, uh, maybe coaching services, maybe doing uh, like strategies. And maybe, maybe you can see like what are the commonalities that people are asking me for on an ongoing basis. It's like they always have this ongoing problem with, with Gusto or Zen Payroll or whatever or, or, or QuickBooks. And they always like have these questions and, like, and, and they're always up against this kind of litigation or whatever. And if you can create some sort of routinized package – where where you can say okay for for five hundred dollars a month or a thousand dollars a month or or five dollars an employee I mean, that might be the thing is like how like like f for five dollars per employee or ten dollars per employee or whatever I will make sure uh, first I'll do a monthly audit with you I'll come in and we'll look at your payroll processes make sure you're not violating overtime laws make sure you're not violating uh 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 what is the name of that. Oh golly, I, I can't remember the name of the, of the agency that 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 like Family Medical Leave Act and stuff like that. Um, make sure you're in, you're congruent with 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 all of the regulatory bodies out there. So we'll spend one hour a week doing that. Um, part of this uh, twelve month software uh, subscription services will get your your implementation uh, 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 up to snuff. So you might have some like uh, like like your software implementation. Uh, maybe you might like have to front load it a little bit but you'll make it up on the back end. And, like, if you've got them for 12 months, you'll probably keep them for three or four years, to be honest. So getting them to commit to that first 12 months of, of monthly revenue would be important. Um, and then maybe and maybe the other things would be, like, uh, uh, you come in once a month and do a, do a uh, lunch and learn with, with, with people, uh, managers in the business, to make sure they're not doing stupid things to get the company sued from an HR standpoint. Things like that. Like, package it all up where it's a continual like thing where it's like we make sure you don't get sued by employees you don't get you don't get a uh, a, a department of labor audit on your business and we, and we make sure that you're congruent with all of your uh you know your, your work comp uh laws and all of that and like almost use a little bit of like fear uh you know use case studies where this company was sued by the department of labor and this company was sued by an employee for bad termination and this company was was sued uh by their work comp uh, or wasn't covered by their work comp insurance because they were doing something wrong almost maybe a little bit of fear to say hey you'd be a lot cheaper to pay us five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars a month to make sure that you've got you know good practices in place but i would let the ad hoc things that you're doing the one-off things that you're doing inform what that package looks like and then the other thing i would do is i would focus on getting one customer just get one customer to to sign up for the monthly rate and then after that you can figure out how to get five and then at five you can figure out how to get ten but so often we want to like spend all this time creating this new product and get a bunch of customers for it when in fact we really just need one just get one customer and you'll learn more from working with that one customer on a subscription basis than you would like spending a year planning out some kind of subscription product. Hope that helps. That's the last question. Everybody keep grinding. Everybody keep working on your businesses. I, I wholeheartedly believe that small business ownership is the best way to improve your station in life. And we are very lucky to be in the United States of America where we have access to, to growing and building our own businesses. So stick it out. Don't give up. Uh, keep pushing forward. It's worth it. I promise you. I'll see you guys next month.